this is Evan Drizner reporting from the red carpet for the North Saskatoon Business Association's Popcorn and Entrepreneurship Series, a documentary film that you need to stay tuned for, a simple story of success featuring the Semple family, owners of Brand Tractor, a success story in Saskatchewan, the air is electric, we have celebrities and VIPs that we're going to be interviewing. Stay tuned for a great documentary. We're on the red carpet for the NSBA's Popcorn Entrepreneurship Series and just ran into Mr. Brian from 320 Solutions. He's also on the board for the NSBA. Yeah. How are you feeling tonight? Fantastic. Excited about the great event tonight and hearing the simple story. Exactly. A great event. So you're a young entrepreneur in the province. How inspiring is it to see a family uh, like the Semples, their success, uh, and know that it's possible in our province? It's thrilling to see that you can go from a small company to a billion dollar company in Saskatchewan. And I've also learned that it's a lot cheaper to learn from their mistakes and make my own. So I'm going to be right tuned in. We're here on the red carpet with Prabha, the CEO of Women Entrepreneurs of Saskatchewan. How cool is this to be in Saskatoon? Amazing. I mean, it's got a great buzz, a great vibrancy, and this is exactly what we need in our city. It's exciting. All the paparazzi, people taking pictures. Have you ever uh, been to something like this in Saskatoon? No, I haven't. And I think uh, we need things like this to celebrate the successes of our uh, entrepreneurs. So this is what we absolutely wanted to see. We're here on the red carpet with Keith Moen, the executive director of the NSBA, the organization that is putting on the first inaugural event. Is this? Do you see more of these in the future? Yeah, absolutely. The plan is to make it an annual affair. So uh, this year we started off with a bang with the Brandt group of companies and the Sample family. They've got a great story to tell, and uh, it's going to set a pretty high uh, benchmark for others to follow suit. But next year, this time, we hope to be here and doing the same thing about another great Saskatchewan company. So I have just found on uh, one of the busiest red carpets I've ever worked, the sponsor of the red carpet, Christian Braid from Braid Flooring and Window Fashions. How cool is this event, man? This is a really exciting event. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this in Saskatoon before, so we're just happy to be part of it. No, I came around the corner and there's people screaming and lights and red carpets and it's incredible. And how cool as a business owner is it to see a local success story? I'm talking billions of dollars made here in Saskatchewan. The special thing about Saskatoon and Saskatchewan is the fact that successful people tend to give back and we learn from those that have been there before us and this is just a great example to learn from the, the Semple family that have obviously had a lot of success here in the province. We've caught up with the men of the hour, Gavin and Sean, the Semple family. How does it feel to be uh, on the silver screen? <laughs> well, exciting, that's for sure. Yeah. Very exciting. What makes you more nervous, being on the silver screen or a big business deal? Uh, probably this red carpet's making yeah. me a little nervous. <laughs> I think so, yeah. We, we usually don't get this reception that, uh, when we're doing it. Yeah, in. there's no receptionist giving you this when you're going in to sign some contracts? No, not usually. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how excited is this for the premiere? The documentary I've seen, it's incredible, it's inspiring. Are you guys excited? It's amazing. I mean, it's a uh, real humbling for us and a real honor for us uh, to be the, the inaugural uh, family, I guess, to be honored in this way. So we really appreciate it, especially given all the great businesses and great families in the province here. Yeah, I agree. So how exciting uh, is it to have your story told on the silver screen? Did you ever think that would ever happen? Well, I, I never thought it would really happen. I mean, it's uh, it's exciting and yet it's nervous at the same time. I'm here with Minister Morgan with the Sask Party. Uh, how exciting is this to have a local success story like this in Saskatchewan? Great business. You know, it's wonderful to see people that have been successful in our province and have chosen to stay here, rebuild, renew, and it's good to see that this is a family business that's now being spread to other generations. Yeah, that's exactly. And how good is it for our province uh, to have businesses like this? They're a major employer. They pay them a lot of money in taxes, which we need right now, and it's, uh, it's good to see them and uh, they're genuinely nice people when you talk to them. They'll sit down, they'll give you advice, they're mentors to junior businesses. It's wonderful. Well, we've just stumbled upon another success story in Saskatchewan. How are you feeling about tonight? Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah. 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 Excited. This is a great event. We lots of buzz, lots of people excited, uh, and a cool documentary. So, yeah. uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you're feeling about business in Saskatchewan and how inspiring it is to see a family like the Semples? Oh, it's extremely inspiring. You know, a lot of companies doing very, very well. Saskatchewan is a place to be for business. That's for sure. So. 
I'm here with Mr. LaBelle Lionel. I only say Mr. because you're recently retired. A Saskatchewan success story in your own right. Uh, lots of experience. How cool is this event? It's fantastic. This is about time in many ways. You know, yeah. we have many, many success stories in this province that really start from humble roots. Yeah. And so I, I've known Gavin Semple a long, long time. He's a prince of his guy. Uh, Sean is a tremendous young new leader, yep. the next generation yep. leadership. So it's a great day. It's a yeah. great day for Saskatchewan. I just found Wally Ma, owner of Northridge Developments, a great company in Saskatoon. How great is it to see a family like the Semples from Saskatoon be uh, represented here tonight? Well, you know, obviously, I mean, the accomplishment of this company to hit a billion dollars in sales is, is uh, it's unreal. I mean, very few companies in Canada probably hit a billion dollars in sales, so congratulations to them. So how cool is it to be at a red carpet event for a family, a local Saskatchewan family, a billion dollar family? How inspiring is that for you as a businessman? Well, for sure, you know, it's uh, we kind of had our roots small in Jansen, uh, Saskatchewan, so it's nice to see, you know, they had real roots also, and uh, to be where they are now, very, uh, very impressive, very inspiring. A past president of the NSBA, Mr. Aaron Loris of Loris Disposal and his lovely wife. Thanks so much for coming and stopping with uh, Shaw TV today. How do you feel about an event like this? Really excited to be here. This yeah. is a fantastic event. It showcases what Saskatchewan is all about as far as business goes and hard work and, and work ethic and all those great things. Yeah, exactly. They, the Semple family, we just met them. Super humble, down to earth family, much like many of the business owners in Saskatchewan. Do you think there's a bit of uh, reason for that with the success they have? Bit of reason for being humble? Well, like the success being part of the package, of being a humble, good I think that's why Saskatchewan people are so successful, whether we're successful in our own province or they go abroad and, and, and have success there. That's, that's what we're all about. That's our MO. We're on the red carpet with two business owners in Saskatoon. Derek Reimer of Concept Science, uh, thanks so much for dressing up. Oh, you're, uh, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> and Alison Hunter came right from work. with uh, Hunter Bowling. How cool is this event for you guys? I think it's fantastic. Yes, I've never felt like such a celebrity before. <laughs> I know the air is electric. I've been doing these interviews and people are screaming and I've seen the documentary. It's fantastic. Are you guys looking forward to it? Yeah, absolutely. You've seen the documentary already? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we're That's looking good. forward to it. It's the perks of being the talent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for Thanks. stopping. Really appreciate right. it. We're here with Larry from the Saskatchewan Polytechnics, the CEO and president. Thanks for stopping with Shaw TV. Oh, it's a pleasure for sure. How, it's a great event tonight. It is a great event. So you, you deal with businesses uh, throughout Saskatchewan and a lot of uh, progression, let's say. Yes, how, how neat is it to see uh, Saskatchewan progressing in the business world where we have people on an international level like the Brant Tractor, the Semple family? It's fabulous. I mean, that's that's what we need to do is get more of those stories about, out about the great success that we have and the success stories that we do have in Saskatchewan. And it's all about the people. The people make those uh, those stories come true and those dreams come true so to be here to celebrate on behalf of Gavin I think is just tremendous and it sends a great story to everyone else in the country about what we can do right here in Saskatchewan. Exactly we've got a great province with great people thank you so much for stopping really appreciate it. People are excited Darren. They are very excited. City Councilor how cool is it to see uh, an event like this in the city? I think it's very exciting that this is happening in Saskatoon you know uh, the brand group of companies started in Regina but they have brand out all throughout Western Canada and it's great to be having this event in our city of Saskatoon. Yeah it's great and it's great to have leaders like you in the city supporting it, supporting the community. How uh, much of an impact do businesses have on our city, on our economy, on the community? They are the driving force of our economy which uh, then supports our community. The Everything that happens in the city would not exist without the businesses and the support that they provide us and the jobs that they give the citizens. They keep the uh, the engine of the city moving. Well, the red carpet for the NSBA Popcorn and Entrepreneurship Series is all wrapped up. All the VIPs and celebs have gone in. Christian Braid from Braid Flooring and Window Fashions, a sponsor, is in. We're excited about the show, so why don't we go in and enjoy it. Here's the key to success and the key to failure. We become what we think about. Human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. I was born into a family with a, a father that wouldn't let us use the word can't. I mean, he was, uh, there was no excuse for not succeeding. You just weren't allowed to quit. 
and uh, I know Sean has got that trait uh, more than I do. You know where that the came from? Or... Rolls downhill, and I'm <laughs> at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> there was uh, six six of us in the family, plus my mother and dad. So there was eight of us in a 800 square foot house, and uh, we had no running water, no electricity. It was pretty basic, and uh, we all worked on the farm. We went to a one room country school five miles from here called Saddle Mary School. Uh, we went there with a horse and buggy in the summertime and a horse and sleigh in the wintertime. Both of us left the farm when we went to Luther College in Regina. I remember getting up the first morning and listening to this sound and it sounded like somebody was frying eggs, only to discover that it was somebody in the shower. And I had never seen a shower before. I lived in one of those little rooms at Luther College for four years. Where the dor dorm dorms were over here, right? As a dormitory student, no, that was the girls' dorm. We oh, weren't allowed to go over there, okay. John. To <laughs> be honest with you, at Luther, I, I was, probably could have been chosen as the most likely to fail and maybe I was and they just didn't tell me but when I think back on it now I realize that that school probably had more influence on me than I than I realized at the time. After I graduated I went back to the farm and uh, my father passed away suddenly uh, after about six months. We were really looking for off-farm income in, in the winter time to sort of supplement the farm. That's how I got involved in uh, in sales. When I was a kid, I mean, I thought, again, it was pretty cool, my dad, because he sold everything back before Brand, right? I mean, I remember coming home one time, and in my room, he had all these hockey stickers. He was a decal salesman, and I thought it was the coolest thing, and I'm stuck all over my mirrors. The other time, he came home, and he had duck decoys, and he thought he's going to, you know, make his next, uh, next uh, bunch of money selling duck decoys. Yeah, Gavin and I were involved in a few things, and we succeeded quite well for a time. Um, until we didn't. We didn't live in Regina, we lived in another center. And my mom at the time had three waitress jobs and uh, anyway, we decided it was time to come home. Uh, we didn't have enough money for, for the three tickets. And so mom stayed out there until she got paid again. And the story uh, that, that I remember is that we had basically a, a jar of mustard and a loaf of bread. And really that's what we had to eat until mom got paid. We were just trying to survive and <laughs> do what Gav wanted to do what he liked to do, you know, he, 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 always, he always tried to improve himself. I was fortunate enough to have a wife that understood that, you know, I needed to work long hours, especially at the start. But somewhat understood. Somewhat <laughs> understood, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he couldn't have got by without me. <laughs> but you know, we had very humble beginnings. Yeah. And uh, so there's a natural tendency to remember what that was like, and uh, I guess the mustard sandwiches didn't hurt either, yeah, Daddy. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
really didn't know anything about the business, didn't know really anything about sales, other than you had to call on people and you had to go see what you could do. It was fortunate that day that he said, you know, it's funny you called on us today, today's the last day for our machine shop and we're gonna outsource everything. I wanted to do it, I made a promise to the customer that I could make it happen. Over time, the customer tested us, you know, and gave us some pretty terrible jobs off the start, but all of a sudden I kept coming back and next thing you know, we kept getting some good jobs. I remember the first one we did was the slitter knives and they asked us to sharpen them, which was almost impossible to sharpen them just to see whether or not we could do it or not. And of course, the young guy, you say, absolutely, we can do anything. When you came back with a $100 order, it was a big order. It was a big order back then, yeah, that's for sure. So he went out and he had some real success with, uh, with that role. And then he moved on to other roles throughout the company and he's, you know, he's excelled at, at all of them. And he was always pushing the boundaries. As far as entrepreneurialism is concerned, I don't know anyone better at it than Sean. Even back then when we were uh, selling uh, machine shop services and uh, trenchers and golf course equipment and the agricultural equipment represented a large percentage of what we did. So we were really dependent on agriculture and we sort of followed the cycles. And so I said to dad, we really need to specialize the sales department. And so we segmented the sales department. And that was the first time I really started to realize what's possible when you really focus on something and as soon as we did that, they began to flourish. The very first one that we specialized in was our custom machining and manufacturing, which is now today called Brandt Engineer Products Division. The second move we did, which was Brandt Industrial Turf Equipment Division, which now became eventually the Brandt Tractor, it was moved over onto 840 Winnipeg Street. Uh, I said, this is our building that we want to be in, which was a $200,000 building and you know it was a fairly uh, fairly big number at the time and of course I was really focused at that time on making sure that the income exceeded the outgo. You know every entrepreneur takes risks. You right. have to be prepared to take risks if you're going to succeed no as question. an entrepreneur but you have to know what the limit of your risks are. People kind of laughed at us a little bit when we first started because of course everybody had bigger shops than we had but we started to realize a little bit that people don't buy facilities people buy people and if you can build a support structure that that supports the customer the facility is important but it comes second because you can have a great asset anybody can go buy a building but you can't buy a good business at the time we looked at the John Deere business Sean was managing what we called our industrial turf dealership and Sean read the ad in the paper from John Deere looking for a dealer I always dreamed of what well, geez what could we do if we had a major line, you know, what kind of volume could we do? What kind of commission check can I get? But in our ag division, it was pretty tough times. And, and unfortunately, we went through a bit of a, a union battle at the time. And uh, we were fortunate that the employees had decided to decertify the union. I said to dad, you know, now's our time to do this. And of course, we're all licking our wounds a little bit, but in good times, the opportunities don't come along. It's really in the bad times that the opportunities come along. Positives to a decline in the economy too. Absolutely. Positives to, uh, you know, they don't look like positives at the time. No, but, but, they, but the, the stronger get stronger and the weaker get gone. The thing that's amazing to me about Sean is he's fearless. Or at least it seems to me he's fearless. You know, and that was a trait that I saw in him as a kid. When he had an idea about this is the way we're, we need to do it, he just did it. Sean is not easy to persuade not to do something when he decides he wants to do it. And uh, it, that was the biggest decision that was ever made at Brandt. And, uh, you know, has led to more success than we anticipated at the time. Part of being successful and our success is just being hooked up with a company that was growing. John Deere was expanding the product line, and that expansion yeah. of the product line was no different getting hooked up with so, a customer. As they grew, yeah. so did we dreamed of getting into a, a big line and, and really having more of a footprint than just one dealership in Regina. And so Saskatoon was the second dealership in our, in our chain of dealerships that we have today. We thought this building was going to be way too big uh, for us. And, yeah. You know, it was an older building, we had to renovate it, but we quickly outgrew that. The sales bullpen were in the back and it was pretty humble beginnings. Yeah. Pretty humble <laughs> beginnings. Two stores, we were supposed to do a total of $8 million out of yeah. two stores, $4 million a store, and $4 million a store was uh, not a lot of volume to support the operation at the time, but. If you have a dream or you have a vision, you have to be commit and take chances. Oh, yeah. 
bond. And it's got to be calculated risks, but the uh, Saskatoon market, and particularly northern Saskatchewan, right. has been really, really good for oh, us, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been, been a, it's been uh, very good for us. One of our best uh, dealerships in, yeah. in the country. You know, we expanded fairly rapidly across the west, but there were times also that were uh, discouraging in that process. Success is not a ladder that you climb one rung after another sometimes. It's two steps forward and one step back. With diversity comes challenges, and challenges are, you know, trying to stay focused and trying to stay uh, on, on your track. And so with that, you need to have really good people that are, that are winning while we're winning. Dad used to say when I was a kid that, you know, true success comes from uh, when other people around you become successful while you're becoming successful. After five o'clock when the people leave the buildings, all you've got left is real estate. But it's during the day when the people are in the business that, that they make the difference. Brandt is just a vehicle, and as long as the vehicle's taking them to where they want to go, they'll stay in that vehicle. Every month our employees get a thanks a billion gift. Yep. Uh, we just introduced the Brandt Wellness Program, but it's investing in employees. We, we really don't have a, a secret recipe other than believe in people and get people working for you and loving it along the way. And when they love it along the way and they succeed in life, you'll succeed in life. I think compensation is really important and what it does is align the goals of the individuals with the goals of the company. Generally speaking, we have a small base salary relative to the industry, but when you add incentives, the total compensation exceeds the industry. So everyone becomes an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs typically are people that are very confident in what they can do, they're very goal oriented and they like incentives. The incentive-based compensation turns them into being an owner and it becomes their business. And when it becomes their business, it really becomes amazing of what they can achieve. And we always had contests among the salespeople and rewarded them with not only dollars, but with recognition. Find out what their goals were, try and show them on Sean's point how Brandt could be the vehicle to take them where they wanted to go. So make sure your people, and especially your superstars, know where they are going and that Brandt is providing that opportunity for them or else you lose your superstars, you lose your business. We have a lot of people, obviously, at Brandt that, that work awful hard every day. Uh, we're no different. Uh, we're hands-on in the operations. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you're not going to do it on 40 hours a week. Not in our experience. No. In addition to being preoccupied with the big picture, yeah. needs to understand what's happening at the front lines. We like to, uh, to know what's going on and to kind of walk around and ask questions and, and sometimes that's the best way to find out uh, what's really happening. Well, what are we on track for? This is where we measure our on-time delivery to our right. customers. So we recognize that we need to get, to the, get the product to our customers when they say they need it. When it comes to the buildings, I mean, we spend a lot of time. I mean, this is part of our brand, right? This is part of w the way we operate. Yeah. If you have good workspaces, it really helps the culture, helps the, the attitude and, and all of that. It's just a much, much different when you see our old building, which you know yeah. was uh, not up to standard, and this has uh, really helped. Gavin also could have moved to uh, greener pastures, you know, other places in the world where maybe uh, things would be easier for him as a businessman, but he stayed here because he's bonded with Saskatchewan, he's bonded with this part of the world. You know, he, he did things on his own terms. Our roots are deep here. Uh, you can take the boy from the farm, but not the farm from the boy kind of thing. We've invested a lot here. We've been very successful here. We determined early on that if we wanted to build a major business in Saskatchewan, we needed to be diversified, that we needed to export our products. The products that we were selling in Saskatchewan, we knew uh, had an application in Alberta, Manitoba, other parts of Canada, and even and in the northern USA. And so when we entered those markets and began to have success, it reconfirmed that this was a strategy that we really needed to uh, explore. I think about some of the international trips to Russia and Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Saudi Arabia, in pursuit of success for our business. What led us outside the province was really kind of the pullback in the province. It was really to grow our business. Um, with that, it's really allowed us to bring new money outside of Saskatchewan back to Saskatchewan. We needed to bring that wealth back here. And it's worked very well for us, so I have absolutely no regrets. If you're gonna have a great business, you need to have great customers. 
and we are also fortunate to have great employees. And so I think those are two of the big benefits we've seen about you know doing business right here in Saskatchewan. The entire province yeah. is the best it's ever been uh, from my perspective and nothing is ever a hundred percent or a hundred percent positive but by and large it's been a great place to uh, establish and expand the business. Raise a family. And raise a family, yeah. In terms of balance, I mean there has to be balance in your home life too. Right. It can't be all work, it can't be all drudgery because you can burn yourself out and burn out your, your marriage and your partnership. We have a very close family uh, uh, out there and, and obviously family is first, but we've always had a saying in our family that if you take care of the business, the business will take care of your family. We've had lots of uh, family in the business. My daughter Juanita is our manager of recruitment. I have three sons, two that, that work at Brant now. My oldest son is our vice president of engineering. They need to go prove themselves and they need to uh, have a little hunger and a little starvation once in a while and, and they get paid in the same way I got paid when I started. They have to go eat what they kill. <laughs> With any family, you're going to have disagreements from time to time, and we have disagreements that we can have a very vigorous debate or argument, if you want to call it that, over a particular issue. When the meeting is done, that's left on, in the room. I got into selling cosmetics in 1968, and it was that company that introduced me to the Earl Nightingale Lead the Field program. Earl Nightingale was a fellow who had a, a daily uh, radio broadcast where he would have five or eight minute snippets on uh, success principles, positive thinking, goal setting, uh, forward planning, etc. etc. I was like a sponge, uh, just wanting to learn all I could learn about why are some people so successful and, and others aren't. I listened to those programs hundreds of times and have studied it ever since. And, and I guess for the first time started to believe in myself. My dad wasn't really a, a sports guy, but he used to say to me when I was a little kid on the field, he said, Sean, just go out there and pick out the best person on the field and do what they do, just do it better. That's what we try to do in business. So when we approach an opportunity, and if you have belief that you can improve the business model, then you just need to go and do it. You know, you gotta set goals. What do you wanna do? And why do you wanna do it? And how are you gonna do it? Anybody can do what we did here. There's nothing special about the samples. There's nothing special about it, what we've done. Anybody can be successful. Biggest thing is they have to believe it. The strangest secret is that we become what we think about. Now success is not the result of making money. Making money is the result of success. No man can get rich himself unless he enriches others. Believe and succeed. He wasn't real secure in himself, and he'd come to me and he'd say, you know, what do you think? You think I can do this? And I would say, of course you can. There's nothing to it. You can do that. And, and of course, I really didn't think you could. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Whenever I get too uh, big for my britches, my wife reminds me that my 1970 income was $35 in total. <laughs> What is the tax rate on 35 bucks? <laughs> well, yeah. and ever since then, I haven't complained about paying taxes, right? Well, it's not really true. But...